Other than that, we're looking at name, van cost, colored indicator, card type, subtype, super type, rules text, loyalty, power, and toughness. Our next layer is control. In the control layer, we have things like mind control, active treason, permanence, which can steal permanence from your opponents. Now you control them instead of your opponents controlling them. That's basically it for the control layer. Our next layer is text. Can anybody think of an example of something that would change the text of a card? Yes, back there. Mind men actually just changes the text of the card. Okay, and what was your suggestion? Slight of mind. Slight of mind, okay. Sure. Humility. Humility. Now, does that actually change the text of the card? What that does is that grants, that actually removes abilities. That's going to be in the ability layer, so that's not going to be in the text layer. Text, we are just talking about things like, just like they said, mind bend. There is one other ability more recently. Yes? Uh, Splinter Twin. Splinter Twin doesn't actually change the text. It's It's, yeah, an ability. Um, So Cyclonic Rift actually has something that changes the text. If we pay the overload cost, then we are going to replace the word target with the word each. So we're actually changing the text on this spell while it's on the stack. That's what we're talking about with with text. And we're also talking about mind men, which of course change the instance of this basic land type or this color word with another one. Yes? Do the laces apply in this layer or in the color layer? Like pure, pure, pure lace. And, and I would have to look up the okay. text for that card unless you know the oracle text of it. I don't. I just. I think it says replace instances of one land type name with another land type. Okay. Name. If it says that, then that's a type change. I mean, if it says that, then that's a text change. If it's changing the type of the card, then that's going to be in the in the type layer. Yes. Uh, so going back to how they work with your with your pre that and this. Layer from the copy um, replacement effects with the text. Uh, if you were to copy that, uh, say like Siphonic Rift, uh, is that kind of like a modal spell where if you apply that copy, it's also applying that text change? Okay, so when the spell is on the stack and you're copying it, yes, you are copying which mode you've selected or the alternate copy in this the case. Alternate text. Yeah, you've paid an alternate casting cost, so the spell that's on the stack. Um, it says each, so you're actually, when you copy the spell, that's a little bit different than when you copy an object. Yes? So, um, similar to what he is, like this, the, the modal is actually wrapped into this as well? Sort of? Like you? It, I mean, I, I used overload as an example because you're actually changing the text. Sure. You know, that, that's what this does. Most modal spells, you're not actually changing the text, you're just selecting one thing or the other. So, for example, um, the charms. Sure. You're not you're not actually changing the text that's on the card. You're just saying I pick this one and this one. The other two are still there. Those are just options that you didn't choose. Sure. Um, so it's not actually changing. The text. This is this is an instance of something where the text is being changed. Sure. Um, so if we had any kind of an enchantment or anything that's going to change the text of a spell, that's going to apply in the text layer. There are actually very few things in the game that apply in the text layer. Most of them apply either the ability layer, um, or the copy layer, or possibly the power and toughness layer. Um, but you're not you're not going to see a whole heck of a lot that's going to be in the text layer other than cards like mine. Yes. Splice applies in this layer. Yes. So I don't want to get too much into spells. Like I said, I used over I used this as an example because there aren't very many instances where it changes the text. Um, Splice actually, yes, it adds the text onto the spell, and then when you copy the spell, copying spells is different than copying permanents, so I don't want to get too bogged down into that, um, because that is, that's going to copy what's on the spell that's on the stack, once you've created the spell on the stack. Um, So, any other questions that don't deal with spells that just deal with permanents? Okay. So after the text layer, we have the type layer. Type, we're looking 
looking at creature uh, creature as a type, artifact, enchantment. We're also looking at subtypes and supertypes. So for example, Midas' lattice turns everything into an artifact in addition to its other types. It doesn't override anything, it just adds artifact. Blood Moon, however, non-basic lands are mountains. That replaces a subtype, so it's a basic land or a non-basic land, but it's a land dash, now it's a land dash mountain. Whatever it was before, doesn't change it into a basic mountain, it just changes it into a mountain, and by doing so, removes the ability that says whatever it says, and adds the ability to tap for one rep. Because it says non-basic lands are mountains, and not mountains in addition to their other types, mountain is gonna override whatever, uh, whatever subtype they were before. Uh, over here we also have Xenograft, which when it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type, and each creature is now that type in addition to its other types. So you have to look very closely and make sure if something says in addition to, it's not going to wipe out any of the other types. If, it's, if it doesn't say in addition to, it will supersede the other types. And if it's a type, it'll supersede the type. If it's a super type, uh, it'll supersede the super type, and if it's a subtype, it'll supersede the subtype. <coughs> so for example, if it says creatures you control are goblins, then if they are a elf warrior, elf is gone, warrior is gone, and now they're just a goblin. It doesn't change the creature part, it only changes the goblin part, elf, whatever that is. Um, any questions about type changes? So what if there's two that apply both to the same if we have two things, so we have one that says all creatures are goblins, and we have another thing that says all creatures are elves. Anytime we are in any layer, and we have multiple things that are happening in that same layer, now we're gonna look at timestamp. We're also gonna look at dependencies, but we're not really gonna get to that in this seminar. Um, not very many things are dependencies, but if there is no dependency, then we're gonna go to timestamp. So most of the time, you're just gonna be looking at timestamp. Um, what a dependency means is this one depends on this one, and if this one applies, then this one either no longer exists or applies to different objects um, or doesn't apply at all. And so most of the time we don't have a dependency, we just have two independent things. This says it's goblin, this says it's an elf, which one do we do? So we're going to look at timestamp, which one entered the battlefield or began applying first. So if you have something that says pay one, target creature is an elf until end of turn, when you paid one and that ability resolved, that's the timestamp for that particular permanent to become an elf. Um, if it's something like an enchantment, then it's gonna be when it entered the battlefield. So when it entered the battlefield, that's when the timestamp was. If it's something like equipment, when it was equipped, that's gonna create the timestamp for when we're gonna apply that. So we take the oldest one, we apply that first, then we take the newer one, we apply that, so if that supersedes it, it will overwrite it, and the only thing remaining will be the newer timestamp. Now if that effect goes away, for example, it's something until the end of turn, and the other one is left, the other one is just a permanent effect, once that end of turn goes away, that other effect is still there. So the important thing to remember is that when we're dealing with layers, you're never actually erasing anything, you're just covering it up with something new. And if that something new goes away, that other something is still there. You just can't see it when you're looking down from the top through the layers. Any other questions on type? Okay. Next we have color. Again, pretty obvious one. All creatures are black. Target creature becomes blue in addition to its other colors until end of turn. We have the same thing here that we saw in the type layer and in any layer really. If it does not say in addition to, then it's going to supersede it and it's going to wipe it out. If it does say in addition to, it's just going to add to it. So for example, if you have these two permanents on the battlefield and you made something into a blue creature until end of turn, and then after that you play Darkest Hour, Darkest Hour has the newer timestamp. So first it's blue, then it's black, and the black removes the blue. So if it was a white permanent to start out with, uh, Indigo Fairy would make it blue and white, and then Darkest Tower comes along and says, nope, now you're just black. Any questions about color? Okay. Ability. We have a lot of things that apply 
bioavailability layer. Um, pretty much anything that's going to be printed in this text box is probably an ability. Uh, so, for example, creatures you control have trample. That's an ability. Creatures your opponents control lose trample and can't have or gain trample. Uh, ability granting, ability losing. Enchanted permanent has indestructible. Indestructible is an ability. Can anybody name some other abilities out there? What else could be an ability? Hexproof. Hexproof. Flying. Flying. Life link. Life link. Reach. Reach. Very storm. Planeswalk. What did you say? Landwalk. Yes. Bands with others. Bands with others. <laughs> You're a terrible person. Just about everything, you, just about everything you can think of is some sort of an ability. Um, so uh, how about... Um, how about devotion? Is that an ability? They're ability dependent on it. Does it? Um, yeah, I was going to say. Depends on the uh, card. Depends on what the card says. Uh, if it's something like a god that has an ability that says, if there are seven or fewer lands of this kind, or seven or fewer permanents with this in their mana cost, this isn't a creature. Well, that's, that's an ability. So all of that can apply in layer six, the ability layer. And we move on to power and toughness. Now, as I said before, power and toughness is a little bit more complicated because there are sublayers for power and toughness. Who can tell me some of the different sublayers of power and toughness? Switching. Switching is definitely one of them, yes. Setting. Setting. Adjusting. Adjusting. Counters. Counters. Okay. <laughs> well, there is another one. Does anyone know what the other one is? Characteristic defining abilities, yes. What is a characteristic defining ability? What does that mean? Okay, so have an example. Tarmogoyf, why is Tarmogoyf a characteristic defining ability and why does that matter? Yes. Uh, so any, anything with a star in its power or toughness, okay. um, it actually will change the card in any of the zones. Okay. Rather than, like, normally any of the power or toughness affecting things only happen on the battlefield. Okay. So for instance, Tarmogoyf mm -hmm. will check all the time. Yes. So the important thing about a characteristic defining ability is that it applies in all zones. So if you have something that is called a characteristic defining ability, or CDA, um, that is going to apply in exile, that's going to apply in your hand, that's going to apply in your library, that's going to apply in your graveyard. Characteristic defining means exactly what it is. That list of characteristics that we saw in the copy layer, things that would normally be printed on a card, if they are defined by an ability, that is a characteristic defining ability. For example, Tarmogoyf. Tarmogoyf says power and toughness, which would normally be, oh, here we have them in order. Characteristic defining is first, then setting, then modifying, then counters, and then switching is final. So Tarmogoyf says its power is equal the number of card types among cards in all graveyards, and its toughness is equal to that plus one. That is something that would normally be printed on the card. So we would normally see right here a number, not a star. There are other characteristic defining abilities that don't apply to the power and toughness, such as if it says this card is blue, for example. Um, I think Evermind is the card that it says Evermind is blue. That is a characteristic defining ability that ordinarily would be printed somewhere on the card. And because it isn't printed on the card, it doesn't have a mana cost that makes it blue. Therefore, it has an ability that makes it blue. Trans Guild Courier is all colors. So trans, that is an ability that is a characteristic defining ability. Yes? So in the newer cards, uh, they have a uh, little color indicator. Color indication. Color box. indicator, yes. That replaces that line that would say this is now blue, right? Uh, yes, yeah. so, so the purpose of a color indicator is so that when you have something that removes abilities, it doesn't remove the characteristic defining ability that you need to define what color it is. So that's why we now have color indicators. It was something that they came up with so that they wouldn't have to use characteristic defining abilities because they just have the indicator now. Sure. Um, I don't know if they've ever added every single card that ever had a characteristic 
finding ability, but I know that now you won't see that as often because it will be printed with a color indicator so that you know what color your card is, even if it doesn't have a mana cost sure, because right. it's a double face card or something else. What's that? I, I believe they've all been errata. They've all been errata. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely something that's going to be in the Oracle. It's going to say, you know, that now it has a color indicator. Um, if they ever reprint it, of course, they'll reprint it with the color indicator. Um, but we definitely do still see it a lot with power and toughness, um, in the power and toughness layer. Um, there's an artifact that its power and toughness are equal to, actually there's two artifacts, power and toughness are equal to the number of artifacts that you control. So things like that, things like Charm Avoid, it's a characteristic defining ability. Setting the power and toughness. They've added some errata to a lot of these now to say base power and toughness. So instead of saying target creature you control becomes 7-7 seven, seven until end of turn, now it would say the base power and toughness of this creature is 7-7 seven, seven until end of turn. They have done that just to make it a little bit clearer for players and also for judges that this is in the setting layer, not the modifying layer. So we're setting the power and toughness, we're saying this is it, it starts out at this. So it used to be a 2-2, two, two. no, now it's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Other effects that modify it apply in a different layer. So if it has some sort of equipment or something that's giving it a bonus, that's going to apply later. First, it's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Then we have our modifying layer. Our modifying layer, giant growth. Target creature gets plus 3, plus 3 until end of turn. There are other modifying effects that may last longer than until end of turn. Um, Creatures you control get plus one, plus one, or creature tokens you control get plus one, plus one, and have vigilance. Um, the plus one, plus one part, that's going to apply in the modifying layer. Okay, after modifying, we look at how many counters are on the, on the, uh, how many counters are on your permanent. So, for example, this spell puts a one, one counter. Once the one, one counter is there on the battlefield, it just sits there, and it's on top of whatever's in the copy layer, whatever's in the setting layer, whatever's in the modifying layer, and then on top of it you have the counters. And then finally, the switching. This is the tricky one. So whenever we have something that says switch power and toughness until end of turn, we are not going to switch it and then add to it and then switch it back and then add to the other number and then switch it back. It doesn't go by time. Time is irrelevant. Switching happens in the switching layer. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to calculate everything that's going on, go through all the layers, go through all the power and toughness. What is the power and toughness? And then when you have your almost final answer, you're going to switch it. So the power becomes the toughness, the toughness becomes the power. So anything that modifies the power is going to modify the power. Anything that modifies the toughness is going to modify the toughness. And then once all those modifications are done, at the very end, that's when you're going to switch them. Anyone have any questions about switching? Yes. So, what are the effects of just uh, like uh, to all your creatures plus one plus zero? Okay. So, what layer does that apply in? If there are three, then they're going to be backwards. If there are four, then 
there are five, so on and so forth. So it's just going to switch it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, as many times as you have the effects until you get to the, to the end. Any questions about that? Oh, they're still there. I'm still the one one who brought. 